Hello everyone and welcome <laughs> uh, Welcome back to Let's Play the Banner Saga. They've just updated this so except expect this Let's Play to break at some point. Let's see what we can buy uh, One renown gets one food the problem it, it's kind of the thing is I'm not entirely sure I should get it at that price But we've only got five days worth of food. Oh, I think we already bought some didn't we to go up to five days Even though I'd bought up to ten last time Right, heroes. I don't want to spend any renown, actually. But I don't think we've picked up anyone new. Hmm, Ivor's injured. We can't rest. We'd have to head out, and we certainly can't rest three days. Um, that'd be most of our supplies. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's head out, shall we? Outside the walls, things are a mess. Dredge are everywhere. Fortunately, they're going around the hill on which Frostveller sits, heading south and showing little interest in following you, following as you cross into the wastes. You're finally free of Frostveller, but find yourself facing new problems. You hope that whoever Ivan knows at Wormto is willing to help. Oh. Oh. Whoa, 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 whoa. Someone just popped up that we could talk to. They weren't there before. Sure, we. I'm really confused. What's going on? We're gonna start running out. We're gonna seriously run out of food at some point, aren't we? An old man sits astride an overgrown. Calm down, music. Calm down. An old man sits astride an overgrown portion of the trail. You last. You yeah. oh, sorry. <clears throat> you lost? You ask. He adjusts the leather strap on his head and says, No, are you? He jumps up and shuffles towards the caravan, his tattered clothes revealing no weapons. Well, I've seen better, the old man says, peering into the supply wagons. Meh, but I'll join you. He stands next to a fighter, throws his beard over his shoulder and puffs out his chest. The fighter grins and the stranger exhales. What are we waiting for? Lead the way. You've already got enough mouths to feed. True, I'm not sure exactly how much he's he on his own is going to drain the food supplies. Though, uh, who are you? Who are you? And what are you doing out here? Call me Ernar, or anything else you like. The old man says, "A man goes where he pleases, doesn't he?" His stern look is more comical than intimidating, but you stop looking for answers. We've already got enough mouths to feed. That I'm guessing it's a yay or nay. If we invite him along, something might happen. But this is the thing: is we're low on food as it is. But if he lives around here, he might know where we can get some supplies. Hmm. I don't know. I haven't got any evidence. Like the guy last time is like you can't. Okay, I'll, there's evidence as to why we can't trust him. But this guy. He's not got any weapons, he's not really a threat. Hmm. And if we just turn around and say, oh, you're not a fighter and you're draining food supplies, well, so's the clansman, babe. So are the clansmen from the village. Hmm. Oh, you're, you're, you're welcome to join if you can keep the pe keep peace. Keep peace? The old man puffs through his mustaches. Hmm. None fleeter than old Anar. And husbands, mind your wives. I'm cursed with the golden tongue, not silver. The caravan enjoys a good la laugh as they start moving once again. Oh, I thought we might have boosted our morale a little bit. I'd like to rest, but I don't think we can for the supplies. Oh, vultures. That's not good. Does something happen around here? Yes, I thought so. Is this another godstone? <gasps> People! We might be able to get some food. Food is... Supplies are good. You find a surprising number of people camped out at the Godstone. They've been here quite a while, ever since the sun stopped. Apparently you think Radomir... Radomir, the sun god, has, has come back and they're worshipping him despite the bleak environment. They welcome the caravan, mingling and swapping stories with the others while you rest. They have almost nothing of value to trade. Oh. But their leader approaches an office to let you join in their tribute. 
Uh, ask what, well, we'll ask what this tribute involves. Gullen Furry, one says, showing you a golden liquid in a silver bowl. He places some on his chest, which almost sounds like it's sizzling, and explains through clenched teeth. It's a gift from the sun god, an oil that burns like the sun and lets them see things clearly. Uh, hmm. I'm not sure it's a good idea. Hmm. See if any we'll see if anyone in the caravan's interested. Not surprisingly, you find no takers. You wonder how devoted you'd have to be to go in for it yourself. But we will inspect the godstone before departing. We always do that. Nobody can really agree on what Radomir looked like. As fond as he was of his own isolation, he never directly contacted contacted humanity. Most think he was a serpent that lived in the sun, and it's not uncommon to hear speak of seeing the tail of a great creature slipping through the thin clouds on a sunny day. Radomir was always one of the lucky gods, the kind of people thanked for good weather, healthy livestock, and a good harvest. Despite all that, the biggest mystery has always been how his godstone came to be found at the bottom of a dried out lake. After some rest, you continue on. The sun god worshippers are keen to stay, so you pack your things and return to the road. Maybe I should have had... I mean, that's one of those things where maybe if you do... Do, do the um, thing, you get some benefit, but... I don't know. I'm worried about morale. I'm worried about supplies. I'm worried about everything! I'm guessing something's going to happen soonish. No? Oh! Several people have noticed black vultures circling above the caravan, taking advantage of the light snowfall. They pose no threat, but they have a visible impact on the mood of your clansmen. The next time you look, Oddleaf is firing arrows into the air, which nearly tag, a bird, nearly tag the birds once or twice. Get lost! No dead down here! She shouts to nobody in particular. What are you doing? I think, yeah. I think what we're going to... hope this might boost morale. We might shoot some down and get some food out of it. But it's also a kind of... We're fighting physical manifestations of death. So it might boost morale. I don't know. We'll join her in shooting at the vultures. First person to knock one out the sky gets their wish granted. You announce. Several of the caravan give it a try. Including Alette. Enjoying the sport and turning around in morale. It's no big surprise when one of Oddleaf's blue feathered arrows brings down a bird. You know, says Oddleaf, scanning the caravan. A lot of these women, they could do this. You can tell from the look in her eyes she's excited about the idea. I think I'm going to start training them how to fight. Try to keep her expectations intact till you think it's a bad idea. No! The more fighters we get, because we're probably going to end up... I'm guessing from gameplay perspective... So I'm kind of cheating. We're going to end... Right, from a gameplay perspective... I'm guessing the war mechanism that we had um, with Hakon will, will probably happen in the, with Rook as well. But also, um, it would be good just to have more people that can help defend. Because we're going to hit a point where we're going to need people. Or we're going to need people who can do as many people doing hunting as possible in this kind of really arid... Not really arid, but desert location where there's not there's not going to be any food unless we can trade for it. So yeah, we'll encourage Oddleaf to trade in the women. We can always use more fighters. You tell Oddleaf. If there is any proof, you know how to train someone with a bow. Oddleaf gives you a smile. She he heads off to some of the women in the caravan showing them the vultures she shot down. Okay, that wasn't that didn't give a boost of morale or supplies. We're going to run out, aren't we? Okay, now we're starting to lose people. Uh, oh dear. Some clansmen have discovered a large patch of wild fruit. When you approach, you see some people have begun to sample them. A mother f frets about whether they're safe after overhearing one of the children say that it tastes funny. Others start gathering by the basketful. Um, so I think... There's no point in gathering the supplies if they're poisonous, because we'll just end up killing people, or losing, or end up having to lose all the supplies anyway. So, offer a piece to one of the animals in the caravan? Yeah, because they'll, they'll probably be able to smell something about it. Yeah, and we observe someone who already ate some, it might be a slow-acting thing, so offer a piece to one of the animals. 
Lacking a poison taster, you hold out the fruit to a goat. Okay, uh, the beast sniffs it before eating the entire fruit. Only the pit falls to the ground as the goat licks its mouth and leans towards your hand, wanting more. Okay, so... Uh, okay, we'll try some else. Oh, I'd say goodbye yourself. Several watches you taste the fruit. You pause after swallowing and, feigning cho and feign choking. A let rushes to your side in a panic, but your laughter soothes everyone's concern. Soon, everyone is a little tipsy from the fermented fruit, and spirits are high. Yay, supplies! Maybe we don't have time to rest. I maybe would have got more supplies thingy on it if I just tried it, but it's one of those things where maybe that's a and you're dead or you're horribly injured for a number of days and you don't get the supplies. Ahead, you find what happens to be a good number of peasants surrounded by brigands. One of the armed men looks over his shoulder and says, Gods be damned, this is all I need. Listen, don't interfere and one of these supply wagons is yours. While remaining silent, the peasants plead to you with their eyes. <sighs> we need the supplies. But, um, Wormto is just, th that's Wormto, just here. So you'll be able to get some supplies there. <sighs> if it's also possible they're heading to Wormto as well, in which case they join up and we eat their supplies. I mean, obviously we become one caravan. You look after them. Uh, what's going on here? Uh, what, what, what's going on here? I'm just trying to be challenging. Nothing concerning you, he replies. And before you start telling me otherwise, these are my clansmen. Thought they could run off with every scrap of food in the village. Now all I want is you to move on to take your share or don't. Mm, don't get involved at all. Take the supplies and leave. No. I don't think so. They're scared. We're going to draw our weapons. We're, same with Hogan and Mogan. Um, we, we fought for the people who wanted the option of leaving. The man turns completely towards you, shaking his head. Had a feeling you'd be that type, is all he says before the brigands rush you. It's been three days. Ivor should be all right now. Good. Right, let's, let's do this. Let's do this! I haven't played with these guys in a while, so I'm going to do terribly badly. Well, um, we had the... Uh, Fight in uh, thingy. What's it called? Uh, Frostvella. Right. We have our archer representative. Actually, yeah, let's put you there. Put you there. Because Oddleaf is more purely ranged. So keep her slightly further back. Behind, so behind Ivor. But of course, Rook is more bit more varied he has a bit of melee to him so we can run in so we'll, we'll try we'll try this out uh is anyone close enough to be able to hit me yeah she might be able to move up though rest i know it doesn't it's basically a pass in your first turn at this point could run in only do a little bit of damage Ooh. you're not gonna take i don't think he's gonna take three damage Oh, he's doing the flail as well. Okay. That's Hogan. So if I attack him, I can do three break. So just do flail. Return the favor. Rook. So actually... Oh, no, this is Mogan, isn't it? Because I was thinking if I did Rook, I could do the uh, Mark Prey and do almost nothing. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I want to... I don't know who to tie is the problem. Hmm. Yeah, I think we'll do... Blo we'll, we'll do Bloody Flail with Mogan as well. Oh, wait, is he... No, okay, so I was wondering if he was doing damage. Ouch, that's not good. Rook. I mean, I can probably do two... I can do two damage to him. I can't... Ooh, if I go there, I can do almost nothing to him. Uh, he'll die, whether I attack him or not, or use Mark Prey. 
So I may as well attack it. Well, either way, I'm using a willpower, aren't I? Ah, no, because if I mark prey single, they'll only do one damage each to him. But if I attack and use a willpower, I can kill him. If I attack him, it will do one damage. Uh, let's yeah, let's attack and do the use a willpower. Let's let's eliminate someone. I, I'm not sure if that's a great idea, but we'll try it. Leave my odd leaf alone. Archery jewel. Ivar. Bye bye. Take out the archer. Yeah, he's got the run through, hasn't he? So, I need to chip away at this guy as much as possible so that other people can take him out. Yeah, that's not good. Eagle might be going down. There's a wee bit of a problem. Bloody flail. Keep using them! Yeah, Eagle's in trouble. Do I send him over here? No, he's, in, he's gonna take damage as well. Eagles down. Oh no, you might survive. Somehow. I'll take that. Hmm. He's not gonna. Ooh, actually. If I. leave these two to deal with this guy, they might be able to do it. Hmm. What about Ivor? What's he gonna be doing? Because if I go there, whoever I mark prey on will get hit by Eagle and by Oddleaf. Problem is, that's at most going to be two because I'm not going to have a huge amount of... Ah. Whereas if I shoot this guy, I can kill him. And then these guys can move down. I think I'll come down here. Mark prey. That'll go down to eight. And then it's a matter of... Oh, very little decent happening. Yeah, thought you'd deflect one. Yeah, not good. Guessing all these are going. Yeah, all these are going to be deflect, deflect something. 